All anyone needs to know about the Middle East conflict is that the Jews want peace and the Arabs don't, because the Arabs hate Jews for religious reasons and they want them dead. Politics, territory, these are just excuses. Whenever I make this point, it always seems to annoy the right sort of people, so I thought I might as well do it again. If you're one of these people, then you'll likely be a supporter of the boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign that has been so comically ineffective because the world depends on Israeli technology and that's where the money is, not oranges and avocados. If you support BDS, will you boycott the chip in your phone or computer? Or is it just Israeli fruit and vegetables that you have a moral problem with? Maybe you're one of the people who feel entitled to shout down Israeli speakers in universities or to disrupt concerts and sports events that other people have paid money to enjoy. Or perhaps you campaign for the boycott of Israeli academics to block the free exchange of information and understanding. All this is on the same moral level as book burning and if you're a part of this movement, you're a part of that. Also, the relentless focus solely on Israel that ignores the world's real human rights violators tells us that this is an anti-Semitic movement, and if you're a part of it, you're a part of that too. If Israel was a Christian or a, a Buddhist country, there wouldn't be any BDS campaign, and everyone knows it, just as there isn't any BDS for Tibet, a country invaded and culturally raped by the Chinese, but then the Chinese aren't Jews. No BDS for Saudi Arabia treating women like livestock because the Saudis aren't Jews, which is lucky for them because if they were, they'd have to ban themselves from entering their own country. How inconvenient. Crude Islamic Jew hatred has permeated the Middle East conflict from day one, yet its influence is always carefully omitted from all political analysis. Any doctor who diagnosed an illness as ineptly and dishonestly would deserve to be struck off and prosecuted. Palestinian leaders have had several chances for a two-state solution and they've always rejected it because they don't want a two-state solution and they don't care about the suffering of their people. They want all Jews out of there or dead. The leader of Hezbollah is on record as saying that he won't be happy until every Jew on earth is dead. Once you realize that this is the position, then whatever you think of Israeli security measures, your moral standpoint has to change. We know that if the Arabs were to lay down their weapons, they could have peace and prosperity for all their people, and the Israelis wouldn't need to build barriers or do anything else the world disapproved of. They could simply get on with what they do best, technological innovation, making life better for all of us, including Arabs. On the other hand, we know that if the Israelis were to lay down their weapons, they would be massacred, men, women and children alike. The Arabs are even happy to put their own children in the firing line to attack Jews. They hate them so much. And this hatred comes directly from their religion. It isn't politics or territory that causes a mother to celebrate the death of her child. Only religion can do that, and one religion in particular, the one that's insisting on the right of return to the 7th century. Just look at the mess they've made in Gaza, which is now a hardcore Islamic hellhole. The Israelis used to be in Gaza, but they gave it up for peace. They uprooted thousands of settlers and gave the land to the Arabs for peace. And what did they get? They got war, of course. Gaza immediately became a launching pad for hundreds of Iranian rockets aimed at Israeli women and children by people hiding behind their own women and children, a double war crime ignored by the West like all Arab war crimes. That's what the Israelis got when they gave up Gaza, and it's what they'll get if they're ever stupid enough to give up the West Bank. Israel needs to exist because there needs to be a Jewish state. Humanity has proven conclusively over many centuries that it cannot be trusted not to persecute Jews. Jew hatred seems to be written right into our DNA because it just keeps coming back. Any Jew who thinks the Holocaust could never happen again is a fool. There are plenty of people on this earth who would love to see it happen again, and many of them live in the countries around Israel. When Arab armies have attacked in the past, they've bragged in advance about committing genocide and they've still been bragging about it as they were getting their sorry asses deservedly kicked again and again. 
People who want to boycott Israel have no idea what it's like to live on a thin strip of land surrounded by people who want to wipe out your entire population, who have repeatedly tried to do so in the past and failed, and who will continue trying until they succeed, which is likely to happen roughly never, while we in the West keep paying for it. What would you do if you were the Israeli Prime Minister? How would you deal with people who want you and your entire population dead? I know what I would do, and I wouldn't give a damn about world opinion. As for UN resolutions, I would use them to light my cigars. I don't actually smoke cigars, but I would take it up for that reason. I think it's just so important. Because this is a war of crude religious hatred by Muslim Arabs against Jews. And the Jews have to win every time. The Arabs only have to win once for the world to see another holocaust and to stand by once again watching it happen. That's why I support Israel and that's why if you have an ounce of humanity you too should support Israel whatever your political persuasion.